plan today is to target coho salmon on my eight-weight fly rod. We're starting on the Capilano River up at the Cable Pool. Water's really low and skinny. You can see the fish with your eyes and they just stare at your stuff and do nothing most of the time. But the fly guys have been having more success than other gear, anecdotally anyway, so let's give it a shot. Guys, I was just casting and doing fast strips and I had a, a small fish follow and then hook on for about two, three seconds. I don't know if it was, it was either like the smallest Jack Ho Ho in existence or a resident rainbow. I think it was a rainbow. But that's the, <laughs> that's the first hookup I've had here in months, so that's exciting. I just wish you guys were on, but it, it gives me uh, a lot of confidence in my fly, the jig sculpin pattern that I'm using today. Come on, fish. Don't do me like that. Everything I've heard about cap, at least at high water, and there's lots of fish in here, is, um, well, for coho, I should say. Let's get it deep and then very fast strip retrieve. Now, I'm wondering if anyone in the comments can let me know. On low water, is there any purpose in mixing up your presentation with these stubborn, picky fish? Yeah, I think one of the mechanical issues I have when I roll cast is as, I, as I'm pushing forward, I tend to dip my um, the tip of my rod toward the water too soon. I think with a roll cast, you're supposed to keep the top parallel until the end of your forward motion of your like arm and elbow, and then dip it at the end. And I think that's how you get a nice smooth distance roll cast. I think there's like a Rio video on that. Whoa. That one launched. He's got energy. Why don't you come and uh, give me some of that energy? This guy's got a fish. Yeah, good job, dude. If you want a hand, I'm here. Ah, oh, shit. Well, you got a good fight out of him. He lost it, boys. I gotta go get my fly. Bob, your fly came off on a rock right in front of where I was fishing. Let's go get it. While searching for Bob's fly, which I think I found, I was gonna grab the stick and try to pull it toward me because it's too deep. And I found what looks like a cat bugger, a UV bugger in here. So let's try to clean this up a little bit. Recover this fly. Okay, so that's more like a a jig, which it's a good sized jig. I could probably toss that on my eight weight. Okay, let's go get Bob's fly back though. I went fishing and I caught something guys. Recovery mission complete, let's go. All right, we're back in action. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is when I got down in the water here, um, it's, water is almost always deeper than it looks. And that is also true right now. So I'm in like two feet of water or two and a half feet that looked like it was about a foot and a half. So out there where I think my fly is getting down in the fish's face, it's probably not. I only have a short seven foot uh, sink tip section and then about three feet of tippet off of that. And the way that you have to strip these flies, I'm probably not deep enough for very long. Once I start stripping quickly, I'm probably raising that fly up in the water column outside of the ideal zone. So I might have to put on a split shot and then I'll stay in the zone longer on these uh, strip backs. I just gotta be a little bit careful when I let it sink, that I don't let it sink too, too far and then lose this beautiful, beautiful fly. Holy salmon, Batman. You guys want to make a prediction what the temperature is going to be in the cable pool in the third week of August? 12 Celsius, 52 Fahrenheit. I found some other trash. 
Maybe there's some treasure in here, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of hooks in here. That's just silly. All right, taking that home. These fish are jerks. Well, we had one small fish on really early and it might have been a trout. <laughs> But um, that's not a bad way to spend two hours, guys. Um, the spots I wanted to go to, all full, that's going to be the case for the next three months. But that's okay. We'll squeeze in where we can and try to get something done. Uh, I got to go to a fly store and get me like 12 to 15 feet of like T14 sink tip. And uh, pretend I have a sinking line, which I'm too cheap to buy. But for now, guys, let's go to the beach and see what's up. Maybe try to target some fish coming up the uh, high tide. Okay, so the tide's on the way in. I was talking to a guy at uh, the hatchery parking lot who watches my videos, which is cool. Nice to meet you and chat with you, dude. He also had a, a GoPro on, so hopefully he's gonna make some videos, but he said him and uh, a couple of people he was with were fishing this this morning. They saw three people catch over the course of the morning. So not a ton of action, but yeah, I'm surprised how dead it is. I guess a lot of people have gone home already. Well, just as I decided I had to leave and go home, the seal started pushing in. <laughs> go figure. If you're finding fish, congratulations, I'm jealous. <laughs> But uh, there's always hope for next time. Oh, water looks a little darker this morning. Let's go throw off this rock. Well, that didn't take long. So I'm gonna try to catch a salmon today. I'm up at the Cable Pool on the Capilano River. Um, still hasn't rained and it's uh, the last week of September, but I don't know, I just kind of wanted to check out here. I haven't been here in a month. Um, not many fish have run up. For some reason, the fishing was good here last weekend. I don't know why, but I just heard that anecdotally. I'm trying something new today, and that's kind of why I wanted to come here so badly. I bought this blue-colored T14 sink tip. I bought 15 feet of this stuff, and it sinks way faster than my T8. I mainly bought that for when the river starts running going faster so I can get really deep really quickly, um, and I think 15 feet will help me do that a lot better. Um, I've got kind of a shortened trout leader where I tied a tippet ring four feet down on like a, a 3X trout leader and then I'm just running eight pound uh, mono off of that tippet ring down to my fly. So that's what we're trying this morning, guys. Um, it's low light, so I should be fishing while the fish might still be biting. Let's go. Hi, hey, Bob. This is your Trout Flies Jig Sculpzilla. That's what caught me in my last coho. Video link up here. Actually, hold on, what's your POV? Video link up here. Let's see if we can get it to work again. I don't want to lose it. I'm sorry if I lose it, but I want to try to catch a fish, my dude. Okay, that's just rude fish. Part of today is to see how well this thing can cast. And the fun thing about this little fly is I could easily catch a trout. The trout so chose to attack it. Oh, 
Oh yeah. This honestly this this heavier sink tip roll cast way better. I think what's happening is my sink tip is sinking really nice, but then the floating part of my leader, that trouty part, that tapered trout leader part of it is bowing up. So like it's floating on my end, it's floating on the fly end, and in the middle, the sink tip is getting down. So it actually, it's funny when I strip, my fly ends up getting deeper for the first couple seconds. I've just discovered a problem. My jig sculpin has no hook point. I must have snagged it on one of these rocks when I was casting or something. Or better yet, let's pretend that I had a nice tug and a fish took the end. That's, that's too bad. Well, it's a good thing I decided to change up flies. That's really too bad. I wonder if I can retie that. Uh, all the other fishers I've seen have left. Probably because, uh, they were here from dawn till kind of first light. And uh, now there's not a whole lot of point fishing. I should probably follow suit and go down to the beach and see what's up. It's just hard to leave fish. We're gonna have to go up to the hatchery, take some uh, video of fish in the fish ladders, make some shorts out of that. I think that'll be fun content. Part of a film set. What is it? Drip coffee, four dollars. Brownie, four fifty. Scone, three seventy-five. Eh, it's a little pricey. I wish it was real. There are thousands of baby salmon just rising to these tiny, tiny little bubbles constantly. Must be a crazy hatch going on. I think it's probably a midge hatch going on. This right here is the start of the fish ladder. And I go up here into the hatchery. I just saw some salmon jumping in here. That's cool. They're trying to get up this little waterfall, little dummies. Okay, so. We tested out the cable pool, saw some fish flop. That's always fun. No one was catching, everyone left, so I'm leaving. Um, I experimented, tested that uh, 15 foot of T14. Um, that experiment was definitely worth my time because I learned some things about how it performs, how it roll casts, and what I need to do differently when I'm fishing faster water, which is add some split shot on the end. Probably figure out a better leader on the end because uh, four foot of floating taper trout leader not not really the right idea <laughs> but hey i'm trying let's go try to find a coho on the beach i'm gonna use this pink fly i picked that up along with four other flies at uh, pacific angler which is the first time i've been there i went last weekend um met some cool people and uh yeah it was a fun time i'll throw in a little picture of the five flies i picked up didn't really need too many just wanted something i could throw in the ocean something nice and pink try to catch me a coho uh, not so good news. I chatted with a guy for 10 minutes who said uh, there was no rush to come out here. And then another guy drove by on a bike and said, I need to pray to Jesus Christ. So, seems like it's not very fishy this morning, but what the hell. Let's give it a go. I see a guy in an inflatable with a little boat sitting right over the pot of fish, making all these guys casting look bad. What a jerk. Let's go with one of the waves. There are thousands of crickets. That is disgusting. Ugh. All right, let's quickly talk about my leader. So I threw back on my seven foot of T8 sink tip, um, which is what I've been using at the beach, but I've been using it with just eight pound mono off the end. And uh, that has not been casting very well. So I um, 
using a loop-to-loop -loop connection I put on that four foot of tapered trout leader. Oh, I see a little sculpin looking thing in the in the bottom. That's cute. Um, and so off that four foot of uh, kind of tapered trout leader, I've got um, two foot, I've got a tippet ring and then two foot of eight pound mono. So it casts a lot better. And I should be able to get a little more distance out here in the beach. pretty. There's like a, a mist over the water on the downtown side of Stanley Park. Just missed a huge fish flop right here, right beside that guy. That's fun. Oh, there he is. Oh, they're popping off. This is a prime time. This is what I was hoping for. Seals right there. These fish are beautiful. Someday I will catch one. Okay. Big fella. Probably gotta leave in five minutes. All right, guys. Time to go home. Coffee, Orvis podcast, chores, another weekend in the books, another day skunked. See you guys in the comments section. I'm so salty right now. Hold on, I see it. I see it. I'm going to try to get it with my magnet. I'm going to put this magnet on the end of my line. And then I'm going to try to get this fly back because it's too deep for me to stick my arms in. When a plan comes together, I feel like a genius. Let's go home, guys. I think next trip might be Kind of feeling like some still water stuff, some rice lake. You guys want to see some rice lake video? Maybe we'll go back do some uh, fall trout fishing. Unless we get a bunch of rain, then I'll go and lower cap. Anyway, until next time, guys. Take care of yourselves and good luck fishing. Bye.